come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Welcome back. Every Saturday, the Freak Show happens right here, whether you're ready for it or not. We're a movie review podcast where a movie is chosen by one of the Freak Show members. Every week we watch it, then we sit around and talk about it for your listening pleasure. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. I'm going to make my call out again that if you heard us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, wherever you found us. Casseroler. Please go and give us a star rating. Give us a review. Give us a thumbs, thumbs up. up. Something so we can help other people like you find our podcast. Yeah. But who yeah. are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm Colin. <laughs> of the Saturday Night Freak Show. God forbid it's your first episode. And you're like, I'm these two people are cool. But I think asshole. I did that once I don't even know his name. Too, yeah. This is the phantom voice of the Freak Show. <laughs> I'm the host. That's the opening voice. And Igor. Who knows who that is? Okay. So uh, <laughs> tonight uh, we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Me. What did we watch tonight? We watched Night of the Demons. And from the year? 1988. And directed by? Kevin Tenney. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah. That guy. <laughs> that guy who did many things. He did Witchboard. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Lamar. We know Witchboard. <laughs> <laughs> like deja vu. Oh, what are we yeah. Witchboard from, Colin? <laughs> well, that was the movie was that it? famously put Tawny Katane on the oh, map. No, she wait. was in the covered the, the White Snake videos. That before. came first. Oh, right. Here I go again was before which board? Tony Katane shaking her ass. Damn good question. Now oh, I'm not well, entirely now sure. Now we gotta check well, the Which board was 86, right? Mm-hmm. Which maybe which came first? maybe David Coverdale saw her in which board and then put her in here I go again. Probably on the hood Pop of his board. car. Bowling for soup did a song many years later about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they did. She had it going on. Yeah. So uh that's Kevin. Here I go again was 1982. Holy uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. old. You're old. November fifteenth, nineteen eighty two, the video premiered. So yeah. Wow. He, no. Yes. Wow. No. That's what the internet says. I don't believe it. White Snake wasn't Peter around Mark. in nineteen eighty two. The gods of the internet have spoken, Colin. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That seems Oh, recorded in nineteen eighty two, released in nineteen eighty seven. Oh shit. Wait. All right, we are getting some misleading facts yeah. here. <laughs> Wikipedia doesn't know yeah, because it says nineteen eighty two was released, more, but then yeah. if you scroll down it says 1987. Yeah, so I, was I don't. Say, I remember my high Sometime school Sometime between 1982 and 1987. <laughs> they were in high school in the 80s. Colin. Uh, it says yeah. originally released the on their 1982 album. Yeah, right. Okay, and then look, if you scroll down, look, it says, here we go again, 1987. Maybe that was the uh, the synth radio version that here. came out. Kind of fucked up. Damn. What the fuck? We're going to get to the White bottom snake. of Why this. Why is there a five year gap between right. this? That doesn't make sense. It's maybe, very it got, strange. maybe it got re released and hit the charts when the synth radio version came out, which is. Fuck, have you heard that? It's just. Is it bad? It's. it's It really. It's like. Dun, 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 dun. It's got a fucking piano in it and everything. It's, it's really? a synth piano. Yes, yeah, the radio not, version of the song. It's not the essence of White Snake. It is no. not. <laughs> it's not the White Snake Tony I know. Of. No. Yeah. Slide it in. It's the White Snake I know. Yeah. <laughs> fucking, still the yeah. night. Still the night. Still the night. It's a wolf hunt. I'm sniffing around you, Joe. It's a good fucking song. It's a great song. You're working on it's your 80s song. rock yell. I sound much when I'm in the car singing it out loud. Yeah. I sound just song. like him. It's great. Yeah. I know most of the words of that song. I love White Snake. Uh, well, this is good to know. I uh, yeah, yeah. like the White Snake. The White Snake. Who is the star of Night of the Demons? Linnea Quigley. Mm-hmm. Who's Linnea? Together. No, who's, sorry, my bad. <laughs> who's Linnea Quigley? She's like B B horror royalty. She's a scream queen. <laughs> Although apparently they don't like that term anymore. At least according to uh, what's her name. <laughs> we said it before. It's Barbara Crampton. <laughs> Barbara Crampton. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. She wrote the article. She, wrote the article. she was oh, interviewed for oh, some. Really? They just yeah. They don't want to be thought of just as screen queens because they contributed so much more to that genre and many others. Okay. They don't you know just what? Want to be well, if you're, if you're accepting the checks queen. from those movies, 
You don't have There's a right to say that. that. Come along, Ribbit. I'm sorry. Would she rather be known as Horror Boob Lady? Because that's what <laughs> yeah, she right? is. Yeah. yeah like, I'd rather have Scream, Scream Queen. Queen. If you're yeah. still taking the royalty? checks from it, you know. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's I until mean, that's you say no to the royalties. Group of yeah. fans putting you up on a pedestal and being like, "You were great." And I guess maybe yeah. they don't want to be known just for that, but that's what you did. But and they, willing to pay obscene amounts of money to meet you at conventions, yeah. like because of that royalty yeah. Being three years ago. Yeah, bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, her no. issue with it, if I read it correctly, was, or maybe it wasn't hers. Maybe it was Linnea Quigley. Linnea Quigley, like, either wrote a book. I saw a documentary mm-hmm. at a convention called Screen Queens, mm-hmm. and it had her, Brinky Stevens, and the other one who I can't fucking remember. But uh, Barbara Crampton's issue was and now there's all these you know, starlets getting into yeah. movies and, like, the direct-to-video horror films, and they just call themselves Scream Queens yeah. without actually earning it or having the label oh. applied to them. Yeah, but right. they move up and out of horror so quickly that no one remembers them for their horror movies. You know, right, yeah. we've talked about this before on and off mic, like Alexandra Daddario and like all those other girls that like they do one horror movie to get on the map and then they're up and out. So like yeah. that's not even a Scream Queen if you're one and done. You yeah. know, yeah, right? I think yeah. that's what it takes. Right? You have yeah. to do multiple exactly. movies like Jamie Lee Curtis, mm-hmm. the right. uh, original. Multiple. Well, you know, again, I said Fay Ray was, mm-hmm. but I mean Jamie Lee Curtis basically codified the. Right. The tie, you know, earned it. Scream Queen. I think she wasn't happy with that either because she wanted to do more highbrow stuff like trading places. But, um, and perfect with John Travolta. (laughs) Oh, Oh. (laughs) and love letters. I keep bringing that. Nobody's seen this movie. Love letters. Um, so, (laughs) um, sorry. You had me at True Lies, Sean. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So, um, Linnea Quigley earned her title as a Scream Queen. Um, through at least three movies that have gone on to uh, exist in time, uh, or have stand, stood the test. <laughs> the other movies not exist in time. Is yeah, what I want to add. No, because don't forget about yeah. them. They just disappear. Yeah. They're lost in time. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then there's other ones that exist. So that would be Return of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. No, actually, her first one was uh, then it was any note was uh, uh, Silent Night Deadly Night mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where she was the topless girl who gets hung up on the antlers yes. famously mm-hmm. in that in that movie then Return of the Living Dead where she's the girl who dances naked on top of the gravestone for the so whole you'll see like movie. A, a trend here and yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. in Night of the Demons where she's the girl who pushes the lipstick into her nipple we, which we, is hey, the we, scene that all of us this is the only scene all of us remember right. Well, everybody that's remembers that from Night of the Demons. If you're listening to it, yeah. you're like, I remember I've that. I've seen yeah. this movie, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, that. I've, I've heard yeah. of this, yes. The <laughs> lipstick, yeah, lipstick got it. Lipstick the nipples, yeah. We, yeah. we can't forget she was a pair of boobs in Freddy Krueger's chest in The Dream Master, number yeah. four, the Rennie Harlan one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so so yeah. that was in, in there somewhere. In yeah. Oh, Rennie Harlan. <laughs> boob yeah. acting. Yeah, yeah. boob acting. <laughs> so, I, you know, Rennie Harlan is very serious about directing that boob acting. If you watch Never Sleep Again, the Nightmare on Elm Street documentary, oh, there's an sure. extended scene of him telling her how to do it so what? <laughs> does she fight back on him like i know what i'm doing well she's inside like a gelatinous body so she, <laughs> like, well, honestly like it made me uncomfortable because i thought she might be drowning like so like yeah. oh geez like was there you, fluid in there well because like it looks like she's like swimming inside of it like i'm uh-huh. sorry guys i'm doing the motion right now but like <laughs> like she's going like yeah like it, it's like this weird gigantic body they have built on a sound stage and it doesn't look very sturdy and there are a bunch of people crammed inside of it just like moving around in this weird gelatinous and it's fluid. It's not unlike. It sounds like when, my nightmare. Yeah, it, it it's upsetting to watch, but it's not unlike when Stallone was being like frozen in the KY jelly and Demolition right. Man. Uh, How you like when you're nice watching it? Nice callback to yeah. our previous episode. <laughs> it's like when you're watching, it, you're like, God, that looks painful. That's how it feels to watch like her swim around in like this yeah. big chest cavity of Freddy Krueger. The things that actors chest do for cavity. Their heart. <laughs> 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 Nailed it. <laughs> No, I just love the way that you all laughed and you went, oh, ah! good one, Sean. Wow, that was wonderful. Well, we didn't want you to be left out. So. We have to mention her other movie titles also, specifically the uh, Sorority Babes and the Slime Ball Ballorama. Yep. And uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, which also stars Gunnar Hansen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, if it's got yeah. chains on the title. Yeah. And uh, so the amazing sequence we're talking about, which is like startlingly convincing, I would say, in this film where she shoves it because you don't see the hole in the nipple. No. No. She just like, well, I mean, there's a cutaway. Like she opens her shirt to her boobs and then you cut away. Then when you come back, she's got a silicone. Very obviously. 
like Chest it's the yeah. lighting, right? Mm-hmm. It was not it really yeah, is the lighting. There's the, gla- there's the glare. There's yeah, it was not on. obvious to a ten year old. Right, no, of course no. not. At the time, I can't imagine it wouldn't be for me as well. <laughs> yeah, and in your mind too, when you think back, you're like, you don't remember the cut, right? Yeah. It was like, no, she right. Took her shirt off and then shoved a, you know, <laughs> lipstick in there, yeah. lipstick yeah. right Boy. into her nipple. It was yeah, impressive. right in there. Why it happens, we don't know. There's no reason for this to occur there's in no the movie. No reason. What like kind of rubber, fucked up right? thinking yeah, was behind like that? Just like because I'd be fucked up. I don't know. She's alone in a room, crazy. possessed by a demon, and wants. She's, to I mean, shove that could have been like a thing between the breaks, where she's in the getup and she's just fucking with him, and she's just like, "There's a hole in this." It's like, you push the lipstick into it. All right, like, could have been, been an onset. Well, they discovery. would have had to have made the silicone thing for another reason in order to make that work. Very true. So, do we say who made the silicone thing? Steve Johnson. Who's that? Her husband. Well, not at the time. <laughs> you sound, so you like, sound so like, duh, obviously. <laughs> Why are you asking me these questions, Colin? Oh, wait, we have uh, listeners. Yeah, he right. was the <laughs> makeup effects man for yes, this was. movie. The star of the movie, right? Mm. The guy who designed the makeup effects. I would say so, because that was like a great part of this movie, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I love the day when, you know, the makeup effects guy got billing at the yeah, head right. of the credit, you know, like yeah. special makeup effects created and designed by... Steve Johnson, the man responsible for Slimer and the library ghost from Ghostbusters Mm -hmm. and Syl from Species and the Abyss Aliens and Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. So when you do the voiceover for this trailer, (laughs) just list everything in that voice go on for an hour. And this. He's going to want you to narrate his like reel for all the stuff he's done. He's going to want you to narrate his like funeral movie. Yeah. Yeah. He did these movies and this one and this one. In a world where Steve Johnson creates everything. In a world where Steve Johnson is dead. He made these movies. Yeah. Not survived by Linnea Quigley. Unfortunately, he only was married to her from, strangely, like 1990 to 1992. Oh, damn. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But okay, they met on this movie. Do you think it's because some other effects guy touched her boobs in a different movie? I think he touched some other actresses' <laughs> boobs, is what I'm thinking. Like, that's how they it's met It's a hard this life. Movie. Yeah. The uh, right? makeup effects uh, right. world. You gotta become a nerd to that shit real quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Today we're doing your chest cast. <laughs> well, we did it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I destroyed that one. I need another. Yeah. Wait, was Rennie Harlan responsible for this? Hold on, I got to see when Dream Master was made. <laughs> it's all for the. Oh, it was the same year as. Was he, uh, was he responsible the for their divorce? <laughs> no, they would have been. They would have gotten married. After okay. He's been responsible for many tragedies. This might be one of them. <laughs> Ooh, damn! Sorry, Randy Harlan. I know you're not. No, no, he, he deserves that. Yeah, you made. He things, gave us man. the covenant. I'm sorry. <laughs> didn't, you, didn't he give us a long kiss, good night? Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. The covenant. Fuck. The covenant. Oh, I keep oh, that mentioning oh, that one. That was, Is that oh, the oh, worst? Yeah. Right? The covenant. It's like yeah. blood that's gulch. That's, God damn it! That's a fucking yeah. terrible gulch. movie. Yeah. Wait, is that the one with the? Underground bunker and the like zombie Nazis. I think it is. I think I watched it. Maybe Covenant's really bad though. It doesn't age well. Go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. What year was that? It looks like a David Decock early on. Is that the one with the four families and the the car blows up? The The car. The post twilight. The Boston male wizards. Yes. The Boston male wizards. (laughs) Yeah, that doesn't sell a movie. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I never saw Mine Hunters either, but I heard that was pretty fucking. Was that Rennie Harlan? Yeah. Fuck that was with Val Kilmer and fucking L O Cool J and they're on the fucking island and yeah. Wasn't it with and Christian Slater? Yes. Was Val Kilmer? Maybe Val Kilmer was Is Ellis Cool J a Rennie Harlan regular? Because he was in Deep Lucy as well. Oh, oh I think so. My God. If he was in Driven, then we would have been set. It's but... a weird movie. Yeah. It's oh, weird. he did it's Cliffhanger. Weird. I really like that movie. Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah. That was his <laughs> <best>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're that was the All right. I guess, I guess you're a team. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's fine. Every now and again, you make a good movie. Was Cutthroat Island before or after Cliffhanger? Let's see. That was before. The movie that bankrupted It was right after. It was the year after. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. the end of his career right there. Okay, yep. so it was Cliff. That's why I'm like, Cliffhanger was pretty good. What did he do oh, after that? That wasn't sh- total shit. Deep Blue Sea. Well, all right, then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's good for its reasons, yeah. you know? My head is like a shark's fin. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My head is like a shark's fin. He, he, uh, he has been relegated to directing that's, TV. That's why Will Smith doesn't make songs or movies anymore. L- because because L.O. Cool J killed it. Yeah. <laughs> no, because he can't top L.O. Cool J. <laughs> well, maybe yeah, that's, that's why. it, too. It's like, that's oh, shit. Why. Will Smith's like, mm. Can't do that. <laughs> now, it looks like he's been put Done. in director jail and is now directing TV. Oh. Um, he did several episodes of Burn Notice and White Collar and Covert Affairs. So generic so USA cable. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. USA shows. Characters welcome. 
Good for us. <laughs> <laughs> we said uh, characters, that is, that is not thing, interesting right? characters. Yeah. We said okay. characters. All right. <laughs> All right, so I'm sorry, uh, listener. Oh, uh, oh, no, you, you, you came you here to hear that. us talk about Night of the... <laughs> of oh, the Night Night of the, the Demons. Demons. Oh, this yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. This movie. All right, so Holly picked this movie, but you have a what, history what? with this movie. Oh, I God. I do. So... <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard this, so please tell me your story. I know. So, little 10-year-old Holly was at a slumber party, and we went to the video store like you do. And of we course. were going to pick a horror movie, and I decided, oh, let's watch Night of the Demons. This looks like a fun movie. Uh, I re- Don't pick a bad one, Holly. You better pick a good movie. <laughs> I oh, okay, I will. Um, no. I'll take this one. Night because of this Demons. movie, I remember every detail about that fucking slumber party. I remember the Truth or Dare game, Night of Lies the Feather, Stuff is Bored, because we did all of the things that girls do oh. at slumber parties. Did anybody get lifted? Did, did, did it happen? Uh... I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. No, yeah. Come on. You never know. I don't know. I think we might have lifted her little sister and pretended. <laughs> There's one if person. I remember, I think, oh, right. Fuck. Jesus. Oh, come on. I'm pretty sure, like, because you're supposed to do, like, the fingers. I'm pretty yeah. sure it turned to, like, palms. Just and like, we were just, like, lifting her. Uh, yeah. And then forearms. Or, right, yeah. yeah. We did it. We're witches. <laughs> I just hoisted her over my shoulder. Look, you guys, it's working. No, she's floating. <laughs> but this movie. This one. I remember so specifically, it scared the shit out of me. Legit. I was terrified. I had nightmares because of this movie, and I hadn't watched it since. So I brought it to you guys tonight to face my fear. I understand your fear of this movie or why you would have. Yeah. Being that young, having that experience. I had the same experience with Thriller. There's a point where, like, Michael Jackson turns to the camera, mm-hmm. he's like full makeup. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I ran out of yeah. the room when I saw that movie. Yeah. yeah. I scared the shit out How of me. How old were you? Uh, I mean, uh, if I was 12 when we moved, I was either between 8 and 10, I will say. And, oh, it scared the shit out of me. Thriller didn't so scare I, me. Because I watched Thriller when I was pretty young. I was I was good with that. Not much scared me as a kid. But this, but this terrified this me. Did. This, this terrified me. Was this the only me. horror movie you watched that night? Or ever yes. at that point? <laughs> no, my first horror movie experience, I was 8 years old and I watched... Um, um, American Royal from London, mm-hmm. and I was really scared. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was really scared, and I never wanted to watch a horror movie again. And then they all made me pick one. <laughs> and you said, oh, <laughs> and I'll take this light and fluffy one with this ugly looking demon <laughs> thing on the this cover. This terrifying demon on the cover. She looks harmless. Yeah. yeah. I was so scared. It was ridiculous. Did you ever watch? Because I know for a while this was like a huge thing for girl sleepovers. Did you ever watch The Craft? At a oh yeah, Actually, that was, was like a standard. I was gonna bring that I up. Watched yeah. The Craft. The Craft. Yeah. It was like a standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was. It was a girl Everyone sleepover. Watched, I yeah. watched The Craft. Everyone yeah. watched The Craft. But I was saw the movie. Yeah. Was a young girl. <laughs> I was gonna bring that up because I Angela in this film really reminds me oh, of Feruza Balk. If this movie had been made ten ten years later, it would be Feruza Balk. Yeah, she looked just like her. I was wondering if if they modeled that character off of. Angela. Mm-hmm. Well, when it was made 20 years later, it was Shannon Elizabeth. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was. In the, in the remake. In the remake. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I got you. Yeah. Was she in the remake? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah she's I haven't seen the remake now. Which I haven't seen. Oh, what is it, like 2009? Is that what it is? Yeah. It's, it's, it's fairly like, recent. It's a yeah. better produced movie. There's sure. a lot more plot to it because this one has, you know, I mean, not a terrible amount of, uh, of story going on to it, but and the makeup effects are you know, the current monster movie stuff, but yeah. this one has like a charm. I think like the designs of specifically Angela, uh, Suzanne, the Linnea Quigley yeah. character. I'm and, big, uh, big guy. Yeah. But even, I think it's maybe those two look the best. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like those are the ones you remember. Those are the ones that probably freaked you out the most when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. It's always that change from the normal face to just the yellow eyes it's, and the mm-hmm. fangs. It's like this. Oh, it's like the switch over in uh, Fright Night. That's yeah. the other yeah. one that scares yeah. shit out of me. Yeah. When she bends down like she's crying and then mm-hmm. comes up with the bigger teeth in the face. Also another one that scared the shit out of me. It's kind of like that. My brother and I have had this discussion. There's something about women I feel there is something about women. genuine. No, I feel you are correct. When when there's like a woman in full makeup, to me it's it tends to be scarier than an than a man that's in full makeup. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I feel like men are halfway there anyway. Right, yeah, yeah. you <laughs> joke, but that's I think that's the thing. Yeah. It could like, be. I don't know. It's it's more of a change. It's more off putting to have a woman turn mm-hmm. into that. Yeah, I think there was a missed is. opportunity here because like there's a guy who's having sex with a woman. Who turns into a demon? Yeah, 
Because she's like, don't look at me. And she turns into a demon. And I'm like, there's your moment for the vaginal dentata. Uh, you know. Yeah. Like, I, that would have been great. That, that, could, that would have elevated. Looking, no, then you always would remember, looking for that moment in these well, movies? She's I'm just like, ah. No, no, I'm, there. I, I'm always like. the bar. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess I sit there going like, okay. You know, like in the, in the case the of the, uh, the the lipstick thing. Yeah. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Out of left field. But it's nudity. So you're riveted. Yeah. Right. You know, at least mm-hmm. as, you know, right. like young horny boys. So how do they pull that scene off? Do they show it? Or do you just feel like a... I think you just... And then, like, you, you know, she pulls something up or, or something. Uh, right? You, yeah. you just got to take it up a notch. Right. And then yeah. that would be, like, a memorable moment. Yes. You know, because I didn't remember that moment, you know, mm. in this... Right, right, right. Until we're watching it tonight. Like, oh, everybody else has turned into demons, too. But I only remember, like, you know, those other right, two. Right, because yeah. then we'd be like, oh, yeah, the too. nipple lipstick and the demon vagina. That's what we remember. <laughs> it seemed from. weird right. for her to be in such a position of control at that point in time to not take more advantage of it right. you know yeah. like yeah. i totally get what you're saying like there was an opportunity set up and they never knocked it down right yeah like this mm-hmm. demon has been waiting for halloween mm-hmm. and finally gets a body you'd think he'd do more with it that's all i'm right. saying mm-hmm. that's all i'm fun. saying he'd have a plan i guess yeah, yeah. Well, the movie, uh, we should say, just a brief setup is oh, the, sure. the standard. <laughs> I guess we can do that. Yeah, a so. standard <laughs> horror movie trope, right? Where you have a bunch of kids looking for a party who go to party in, because this is where all kids go to party, the graveyard, the mortuary. The mine shaft. The, yeah. Uh, so in this yeah, case. Why not? <laughs> because it's scary and cool and, you know. Scary is sexy. We should keep a running yeah. list of all the places teen, teens yeah. go to party in movies we watch. Because like, like you said, mine shaft. <laughs> is one yeah. um, abandoned house I'm we sure you just others. do roaming podcasts from these locations just from, you know, let's go yeah. right. yeah. yeah. when we go on tour when you send us on tour we should start yeah, we a should, Patreon let's go on. Yeah. Oh, we no no you know what no I am against Patreon <laughs> no we will oh. not do it All right, there, go, it. there goes the then tour we'll then what if you what if want our fans us demand it if exactly. they dem- if I get if you want us to go on tour writing in and saying do it I will do it yes if they will, yes. If they will, do ten it. people. You heard him. How do you contact us? And I can guarantee you, it's not going to happen. How do you contact us? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. Email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Yay. Right, there you go. Uh, okay, so, so this is Hull House, not to be confused oh, with yes. Hell House, because then they'd be sued by Richard right. Matheson. Wasn't there a Hull House there? Somewhere? Yeah, that's why I thought there isn't was there, a Hull House in some other movie. Isn't there a Hull House in some other movie? Yeah, it's a Hell House. But isn't there a Hull House? house was, I could have swore it was something in another house? movie. I know what you're there talking about. There is another. There's a whole house else. somewhere. Hill house, Hill, Hill house, house, Hull House. There's a Hill House, Hull House, but yeah. there is a whole house it's in, in this some movie. movie. No, it's in a different movie. <laughs> there's a whole house. All right, but it's a creepy looking yes. mansion on top of a hill and a nice little matte painting. Yeah, that they it looks like a little castle because it's got a little yeah. from battlements. Hull House is a real place in Chicago. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh because, okay. Yeah, that that's where I've heard of it. Because It's a settlement house. It is. Yep. By uh, Jane Addams. Yes, Jane Addams. Yes, yeah. Whole House. That's is it haunted? Is. No, not at all. It's actually uh, history lesson. Yes, that's <laughs> you don't know that. if it's haunted you or not. You come to the free you show. Don't know. Probably not. Yeah. you don't know. It was used for so, good things, Holly. <laughs> was Jane, was Jane Addams it. haunting this house? Then? <laughs> <laughs> haunting this haunting people with education. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. So okay, so <laughs> the house battlements, Whole House, all the stuff. Uh. You know what was weird about this? Like, uh, the last time I saw this was probably on VHS. I seem to remember, like, you know, because this is one of those movies. And this is what actually turned me off to it the first time that I saw it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the house is a, um, it's designed to look like the quintessential creepy old gothic haunted house. But it's, yeah. it's a funeral. It's a funeral it house, right? A funeral, yeah. yeah, that's the yeah. thing that is, you know, I, I guess in the movie, it's is it surprising? And in the basement, there's a crematorium. I've never, I've never seen a funeral mansion, though. Right. It's like a big... So many rooms in that. It's a big yeah. funeral. Yeah. It's like the fucking H.H. Uh, H. Holmes murder house. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. for reals. But it, the fact that like all the windows are boarded up and they light this thing with big-ass lights, which is supposed to be moonlight from outside... I remember that being blue as hell. And in this version we watched was the Shout Factory. It was the Shout Factory because one. everything I saw, I was I watched the trailer earlier, and everything I saw was uh, had red tint. Oh, so it. it's not me, just me. No, it's, it's not, not you. my this memory. Is, no, no, no. Yeah. It, it was blue when you saw yeah, okay. it. Yeah, okay. They was cleaned like, it up. They cleaned, yeah. This is the cleaned up version <laughs> yeah. that looks nice. Because everything had that more... red tint over it when I saw the trailer first. So I'm like, holy shit. Because there's a fire somewhere, so everything's red. <laughs> yeah, okay. So no, this just... is the cleaned up version, so it probably was really blue when you saw it. Yeah. That was a Guaranteed. surprise tonight. I was like, huh, I remember that being really blue. <laughs> okay, anyway, it was a diversion. Fair so much. they're going to go uh, 
party because Angela's a, having a party. Who's Angela? The goth girl. The weird goth girl from history class. Angela's the would be cool Feruza Ball. The would be Feruza Ball. Yeah. But she does this awesome like uh, dance. In the, this is the other thing I remember this about awesome the movie. This awesome dance. It is awesome. like because awesome? she's dressed up it's in, interesting. like a black veil bride. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, like a goth bride, I guess. Yep. And she does. Is it awesome? I think so. They hired her to do that scene. Yes, they did. Better mm-hmm. than her acting ability. It was that she could dance to Stigma Martyr by Bauhaus, which is one of the great goth bands of all time. They also did uh, Bella Lugosi's Dead, right? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yep. But it's like. A, sure did. What would you <laughs> say? It is a. It's a interpretive dance. It's like a flash dance uh, ballet of some sort. It's very interpretive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is the thing that you're going to put on at the goth club, right? It's like, look, mm. they got, here's the music mm. video to, okay. Yes, indeed. Yeah, have that playing on the screens at the golf club. That'd yeah, be perfect. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. I agree. And then we scenes of Rawhead this. Rex in, you in between. You go ahead that. and say your golf <laughs> club. I can imagine Colin With showing music up like, by Lordy a, a black and like Rex. mock turtleneck and just walking around. He's like, yes, this is my club. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Do I get to wear a cane? Do I have yes, a cane? Yes, you get whatever you want, Colin. As long as there's a black. Does mock it have a little skull on the top? <laughs> yes. I have, yeah. And is yeah, he? So he can stand like this. Is Igor the bartender there? Yeah. Yes, and he never he's, gets anybody. He goes to Mark Center here. He's, he's, yeah, he's the barback. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the barback. Uh, he went back uh, to the barback. Yeah. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> we should do this. Why, now we need yeah. a name for it. Yeah. We'll come up yeah. with it by I the end of the show. I think we just hang a sign outside mm-hmm. and have people come down here. Yeah. Enter exactly. this way. Igor's yeah. not going to leave. Like, <laughs> you can you imagine trying getting him to a fucking Oh, other he doesn't, place? Go, he doesn't no. go outside. Like happen. <laughs> we'll need like one of those horse trailers to get him to go in. <laughs> he, yeah. does, he won't go outside. No. <laughs> he won't. He just walks out the door. <laughs> so when we call for mail later, we'll just say, bar back. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so all these kids get to this place. And as you do, you immediately set about trying to figure out how to disturb the evil spirits that rest in the house. Obviously. Indeed. In this case... Oh, it was the, yeah, actually, I thought that was a kind of a cool idea, too. Like, I'm like, okay, they're going to, like, you know, let's do a seance. Like, oh, here comes well, because Angela's board. character is supposedly some sort of witch. So, naturally, she would be the one to have some sort of seance or invoke some sort of spirit. But they don't do the usual thing of breaking out the Ouija board, no. sitting around in no. a circle and holding hands or whatever. What do they do? Hey, look at that mirror. Like all, t- what, 15 of them sit down in a room <laughs> and a look straight at it. They, they sit down Indian style on the floor. Like, crisscross like, applesauce. Crisscross <laughs> applesauce. Like they're about to get read a story. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, yeah. It's what, it looked like library hour. Ms. It Angela, really did. Do we have to look in the mirror? Yeah. These are all the rebel kids, too. That's again. what I like about it. Yeah. It's like they're such tough rebels. And, and you just... can tell because that one kid has an anarchy, a spray paint on the back of his cut up sweatshirt. And, and it's kid, on all the cars, too. Yeah, the other kid had it on his switch, or on the car. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, what the sticker? That's not Moose's. No, it wasn't. It wasn't it was Stooge. 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 Yeah. In case you didn't know what kind of character he was, his he's name is Stooge. Stooge. <laughs> he was a, a dick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was a pig. He's a pig. Had the nose. He did indeed. Anytime you what? see a dude with a cut off, cut off sleeves on a sweatshirt, just was no. it a sweatshirt? Or was just it like no. a denim cut off jacket? Yeah. It's just ah, oh, just well, denim was the denim on denim was well, the other. Sal, yeah, Sal had the Canadian tuxedo <laughs> going on. Yeah, he did very much yeah. so. Would yeah. any of you go to a house like this to hang out and party? When I was like seventeen, maybe. Yeah, but you, like, at the cool current age, it, I am no. What? Why? Because these people are like let's explore. Everyone wants to explore the fucking house and be like, this place is filthy. Because it's hell. This is my nights. You never went to like an abandoned place in high you school never for a party. In an abandoned house. I did that in high school. Yeah, lunch. No, it never looked like this. It was like maybe abandoned, but not like this. No, this it was never like, like, like this was like a funeral home. Home. Yeah, exactly. yeah it's grime on everything. People are picking shit up. I'm like, do you know where that's been? This may just be me and my. Well, dude is taking his. Girlfriend, well, they're all in there. Let alone you know, wanting to wanted, have sex in it. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had sex in a coffin before. <laughs> uh, and you never will. <laughs> Most people haven't. <laughs> no. But she's At like, all game for it. Oh, I haven't either. And then the next thing you see there. Who am I to say that that wouldn't come up and I'd be like, all right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I get to have sex. If it's in a coffin, but so. But you're it. into it. Well, then I'm into right. it. Right. Yeah. Who so, says yeah. that I wouldn't be like, yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> wouldn't you worry about the lid, like, falling like, down? Right. Can you lay down a towel? Yes. There's no room in a coffin. Yeah. There's room for one. Point of a coffin. <laughs> yeah, you put a yeah. body in here. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But uh, Alice, <laughs> ah, coffin name? sex. Stop the conversation. <laughs> well, so then we're going to switch over to Alice, who brings up your point of like it's all dusty in here. No, her boyfriend. Is your name actually Alice? No, no. it's like Su- okay. Is that's that what Susie? I was Susie? No, Suzanne. No. Suzanne. That's Lynn Quigley's character. Damn. What's her name? 
Oh, fuck, what was her name? They said it. Alice. She's dressed oh, as Alice, Alice in yeah. Wonderland. Yeah. And She's her, the main character in the movie. We can't identify what her name is. I was. thought her did, name was Suzanne. Did you guys think her asshole younger brother was going to come back into the story at some point and then he never did? I'm, like, glad, I'm glad he like, didn't. He was being a real dick for the first like 20 minutes of the movie and if then never came back into like, it. like 20 minutes away to yeah. a haunted yeah. house maybe, then maybe I would see him coming back. But he was being like such an asshole to everyone for the opening of the movie that you were like, maybe yeah. this kid will redeem no, himself. No, he's just a misunderstood no, little kid. No, Judy. 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 I don't remember Judy. that at all. Yeah. Judy. She was da- dating Vanilla I, I Wafers Roger guy. Roger because they yelled his name every five minutes. Roger. 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 <laughs> Which Roger. one's Roger? Her date? The black, the black guy. guy. Oh, her yeah. date was Her date the was pirate. Jay. Her, her date, date was Jay. Jay. Or Vanilla Jay. Wafer okay, if you vanilla prefer. Wafer. Yeah. Vanilla Wafer. Right. They were really laying that one on thick. <laughs> God, he comes up dressed as, uh, uh, I almost said Vanilla Ice, but it's Miami Vice. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, you can. That's two like, different things. The f- first time we're introduced for him, he's eating Vanilla Wafers he straight so, out of the box. He's so, such a bland, ugh, boyfriend. He's eating Vanilla Wafers. <laughs> and like, there's a nice turn of the box to the camera when right. he's doing Just it, like, too. Uh-huh. So. Uh, was yeah. there a missed opportunity there in the story department? I'm curious because it seemed like the setup for how this movie was going to go was that Judy's dating the nice guy, right? Yeah. The Which vanilla you, wafer guy. Yeah. But Sal, the guy clearly from the other side of the tracks, talks like Rocky Balboa. Yeah. He comes to the door like, where's your sister? And apparently Sal and Judy have dated before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's upset that, you know, she's going out with vanilla vanilla wafer. And so he wants to know where the party is, so he's going to crash it. So the idea that's going to happen is once Vanilla Wafer and Judy get into the room alone, she's he's like, "I want to have sex right here," and she's like, "No, I don't want to do it here because it's like disgusting and dirty or whatever." Then he gets very presumptuous. He gets very upset. He's like, "Fine, I'll just like leave." Then I'm like, "Well, this is where." Uh, we're gonna find. We're gonna switch the roles, right? And Sal's gonna end up being the mm-hmm. decent one of the two, right. or the 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 more. Yeah, they just judge him poorly because yeah. he's poor. Right. He's the yeah, he's like, exactly. the, he's like yeah. the better guy. He ends yeah. up being the better guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's got some faults, but you know what? He loves her, and it's. Uh, I, uh, I found Vanilla Wafer confusing because, yeah. like, they push it so hard that he's boring and plain, but yet, like he's really pushing her into sex right away. And I was like, wait a second. Is he like a boring, non-threatening guy? Or is he like a preppy, predatorial guy? Like, make yeah. up your mind here because... He's, he's never menacing at any point. It doesn't no, feel like... No, but he definitely he's pushes pre- her... He's definitely pushing. pressuring yeah. her, but never like... Well, it doesn't get totally like angry, but it's just like ah. It's uh. one of those things where I assume the dialogue in that scene where she says, "Is this the only reason you wanted to date me?" Because he assumes that she's had sex before yeah. with Sal. We're supposed to assume that that's just not people talking. That's what actually is going on. That is what they are thinking. So, like, then that's when he becomes, you know, like, unwholesome guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And then he's got to get out of there. So, it's like, I don't know. Did they miss an opportunity with that? Because it never seems that Sal actually takes that position. Right. No. <laughs> no, he's off, no, he's off doing something else. Speaking of he's Sal, he's, he's, oh, he's stuck he's in the air conditioning unit thought. and climbing up on the roof. So so we talked about he has a Canadian tuxedo. He's yes. got the Rocky yeah. Balboa kind of thing going on. Did you guys think, because I was thinking about this, that he looked very, very similar to the... Corey Feldman. I was going to say the main male character in the Evil Dead remake. The, the Evil Dead remake. Wise? Well, th- he, had, he, he had the Rocky Balboa speech kind of thing. He had dark hair and he had the Canadian tuxedo. Like, mm. I don't, I mean, it could be coincidental, but I thought I it was I it's coincidental. You know? It's the 80s. Like him. Yeah, that but was that But in the Evil Dead remake, like you know, was, was current time. You know, yeah. it's 2013, right? But they do that. I've seen yeah. that, that character yeah. in like even the Until Dawn right. video game. Whenever you get the group of, you know, yeah. there's always the guy Canadian in the Canadian tuxedo. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta have one. Yeah. Yeah. one. He's a type. He is indeed. That's I guess why I, I just like, like the pirate, yeah. the pirate dude, because it was Roger. like, here's the nerdy black guy who dresses like a pirate. Who in the movie they never once acknowledge that he's black. Nope. At all. It's it was, great. It was it's fantastic. Great. Yeah. He's just a nerd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he just wants to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. yeah. That's all he wants. Yeah. Yeah. He's not yeah. trying to fuck anyone. So he just, just like, wants you guys to get are crazy. out of there. Yeah. I'm gonna leave. Yeah. 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 He's the smart one. Yeah. He literally was like, does anyone have a car I can borrow? Like, he's so polite about everything, too. He just wants to get out of there. Yeah. And spoiler. He lives. <laughs> <laughs> Him and final girl. Get Him out and there. the white girl walk <laughs> off in the sunset. <laughs> yeah. I know. That was kind of like, huh. 
Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Well, it's only because we're more sensitive to that uh, kind of of, those kind of plot dynamics now. Yes. In the eighties, somehow it's like everything was just cool, though. <laughs> you know. In the eighties, it's almost like they weren't they weren't consciously always killing the black dude. So in right. this, it right. was just like but that's they the didn't problem. they didn't think it was a thing. Right. Like but, he's just normal character. But the problem is they would unconsciously kill right. The black yeah. Dude I know. I know. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then somebody else later was like, "Have you ever noticed? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honestly, honestly, the black guy dies all the time. <laughs> Uh, like right, yeah. the fact that he lived and because it happened so rarely made me think like oh, this is a reference to Night of the Living Dead. Like I was like, there's a reference oh. in here because I was like, that has to because that's how often it happens. And I was like, there's no way this is accidental. There has to be a reason. for I it. I thought when they were walking off towards the end, like he would get grabbed and pulled behind the hedge when they were show them walking yeah. away, just like Psh, that's what I thought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. Uh, so the plot of the movie is uh, demon possession uh, transmitted by a kiss of uh, <clears throat> uh, breathing demon smoke or whatever. I mean, Transfer- it feels like demon you smoke somebody. got into yeah. quickly. That's how she got it, demon yep. smoke. In a scene that is eerily reminiscent of a scene in, I think, is it Evil Dead 1 or Evil Dead 2? I mean, Me it's the camera comes out of the, uh, in, in yeah. Night of the Demons, mm-hmm. uh-huh. comes yeah. out of the basement, runs through the house. Mm-hmm. Like rock and roll the, nightmare. Gets in. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's ripping off, yeah, really. Ripping like, off let's be honest here. <laughs> nice you know? call back to our yeah. previous Thank show. You. Rock and roll Listen nightmare. to our stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but that it comes up there and then, you know, nobody can see it. It's the invisible force in the room and it has to wander yeah. around from place to place. And they smell it, though. Looking for the uh, avenue into the world. That happened in, I, God, I can't remember is an avenue, which apparently. Evil Dead it was. It's either Evil Dead 1 or Evil Dead 2. I think two. it's two. I think it's I'm pretty two. sure it's oh, two. Because it's all the, yeah, the, yeah. the science, the archaeologist's mm-hmm. daughter is there. Yeah. Scientologist? Yeah. The Scientologist's oh. daughter? Yeah. Did I say archaeologist? Archeolo- it's a modern fairy tale. The Scientologist stuff. <laughs> Let's write it. <laughs> Copyright. Copyright. <laughs> <Copyright. 2017. laughs> Saturday Night Fringe. The Scientologist <laughs> daughter. Ooh, that's a horror movie. Yeah. Oh, Leah Ramini already has it. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> she does. Never mind. She's got it. She's got a show. Yeah. She's good. Um. So yeah, it uh, once the demon invades your body, then it has to be passed around to the uh, other kids who mm-hmm. either die and then come back as demons. We've seen this before, I think, in several mm. films. In what? Oh, several films. You're right. Like Can't what? Think of well, any of Evil them. Dead. <laughs> Evil, Evil Dead, Dead obviously. It's very uh, reminiscent of Evil Demons. Dead. Yeah. Demons. <laughs> demons. Yeah. Have you seen Demons? Demons, nope. demons? Two. Nope. You haven't? No, no, no I've never seen I've Demons. Not seen oh. Demons. Yeah, watched no. it a, we should watch it after this. Oh, Seriously, it's demons that is a good awesome. movie. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, that's like a staple in this type of thing, right? Yeah. So the movie's then going to be about, like, hey, we have to find a way to get right. out of this. Everyone only gets stuck. One person. and It's like a disease. Slowly it gets from person to person as they die. Mm-hmm. And then everyone's just like, we have to get out. Or, something is going wrong. Any of those moments to you, awesome. Like, this is the one that, like, well, it's a, you know. It's an awesome moment. Yeah. And the, uh, the demon variety. Yeah. Because we don't get the vagina dentata. That would have been <laughs> That would have been great, one. but no. Dentata. Yeah. Because I think uh, Stooge, does he get even killed on camera? Does, what he does a lot Stooge? of throwing. He throws a lot of people. Stooge, does he go into the bathroom and then get like... Yeah, but then he shows up when uh, she, Angela's doing her dance. She kisses him. And, That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, she bites off his one, tongue. The one girl who unfortunately Stooge has been calling bitch the whole fucking movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she ends up out in the garden area. She's they can't try- get across yeah. the wall. Right. There's a magic there wall. There was a gate here. Where's the gate? Yeah, so they're trapped okay. in this area. She gets snatched. She just disappears yeah. and then shows up dead on the hood of a car. Yeah. yeah. To run um, dismay. We just watched this and there were several more people. Angela. <laughs> Angela gets the kiss from yeah. Linnea Quigley. And there's right. the, the guy, the exposition guy. Exposition man. Yeah. <laughs> the guy who went to the library who reads a lot. Yeah. Oh, right. He yeah. has sex with his Asian girlfriend. His in Asian girlfriend. In the coffin, yeah. And they they get like their limbs shut in the coffin. And that's she gets her neck cool. snapped. Oh, yeah. Right. He gets his and arms they just like wake up, up later as demons. Yeah. Because but uh, his arm, Alice, like, Judy wanders into the. Oh, that's it's a good, very, that's It's a good... very like Evil Dead and like yeah, that his is. arm acts on its own and like grabs onto yeah. Judy's leg. That's a good leg. effect though. Yeah. That, that almost. Great. It did. Why Why the hell did that look? great like <laughs> it, it did it, it looked did really me. good for 88 like, yeah 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 for this it, it didn't look like they had the back end of the arm on a string i looked for the string grip, and i didn't see it, it i off, looked it yeah ran it backwards good. 
Yeah. Okay. No, it looked, looked good. good to me. No, like, but, whatever. but there were several seconds of it, like, pulling the leg back and forth. It wasn't just one go. Right, it wasn't. Because so. I've seen, yeah, I've seen bad stuff where it just looks like, you know, the camera reverse and everything. Where yeah. it goes from on the, on the, it was on the thing and then it went to the ground mm-hmm. and they just That's what I thought it was. Yeah. No, it, but it looked but he, better. It looked like, like almost like somebody had, while. like, huh. green screened the body mm-hmm. out and there was actually they couldn't do that then. I know they couldn't, but that's what it like. I'm saying for 88, it looked good. Yeah. To me, it looked really good that they pulled that off. I like Mm-hmm. Colin is not impressed. <laughs> yeah. Give it its credit, you son of a bitch. It was fantastic. The best I've ever seen it done. It beats oh, the God. Adams family with fucking that's the hand what I with thought. Michael That's Payne. what I was close to. I was just like, that's the hands of that part with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The beast yeah. with five fingers. I thought um, it was good. Worked for me. Evil Dead 2. So. <laughs> Evil Dead 2. He just gets to a point where he starts saying words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all uh, disembodied hand movements. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, yep. indeed. And yeah, now the like screaming last week, starts. We talked about my hand. Okay. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, so does that count for everybody who like it's? But Angela somehow, even though she's not the first possessed, becomes the leader. Uh, well, she becomes the poster character for the movie. Indeed, uh, it's her party. Mm-hmm. It does. It feels like uh, it's her party. It's her party. Uh, it's, uh, it's her party, yeah. and she'll kill if she wants to. Is that the tagline? No, no, but it's sh- <laughs> no. It I'm says sure something it like somewhere. Freddie and Michael were invited, but you were invite you know something. Oh, oh yeah, that's uh, not. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, no, Sean, you're a better one. <laughs> <laughs> that had like if reader, tell me if that's been used somewhere. It feels like it should have been. Yeah. If you're reading this podcast, <laughs> yeah, 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 reader. Oh, 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 listener. Oh, maybe you're deaf and you're listening. Why? Okay. So <laughs> if you're brailing this podcast right now, uh, we, I'm so we, sorry. We like all of our fans. I, 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 I love you. <laughs> I got color on that one. I'm sorry. Why wouldn't the, why wouldn't the blind just listen? <laughs> All right, take us back, Holly. Night of the oh. Demons. You know, uh, Michaela, when you put it like that, you have a good point. Why would the blind just listen? It's funnier if they're brailing the <laughs> you, I need, I need you to uh, dictate the, yeah, the transcription. This podcast. This is the Transcribe novel. them for me. The novelization like of the in braille. Picture. Please. Dragon naturally speaking to Google Ooh. Translate. Uh, I think what you meant to say was, if deaf people are reading the transcription of the podcast, sure. right? Yeah. That's what you yes. meant. I go for the shorthand. They're brailing it. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like it's better uh, for me. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, how you doing, Colony, right? <laughs> We're expecting uh, that one, I know. <clears throat> okay. Welcome back. I'm here all week. Dear friends. Okay, so... Uh, Dear reader. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we've taken care of the fact that they all turn in... So this is... Um, uh, well, I mean, it's like a staple in, in horror movies, right? But when... Mm. When did... Do we know maybe, oh, like, when somewhere. they started doing the idea... I mean, so is the haunted, well, house. You've had, like the haunted house movie? Maybe. Okay, so I guess that's what I'm going towards. It's like you had the haunted house movie where you yeah. get several people go into a haunted house for some reason. For they some investigate reason. it. They are moving in or whatever. And there's a ghost or several ghosts or weird spooky things happen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you have the like the teen slasher film. Yeah, it comes out of the '80s when you're getting a bunch of teens in instead of you know the parapsychologists or whatever. Right. Okay. So Night of the Demons is going to take that the yeah. teen thing and mash it up with the haunted house, but it adds the uh, now instead of ghosts, they're demons and mm-hmm. there's possession taking place. So it's like The Exorcist, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which started that the demon possession thing. Mm-hmm. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So w- before e- Evil Dead. Can you think of a movie where people go into a place and each one of them gets possessed in turn and starts killing the others? We're also listening to, or asking you, listener, yeah. if yeah. you yeah. Tell recall us. this Did movie. Did any old like black and white movie do it without like... I don't think without they the, Without the effects, they, didn't, they would just like... Be possessed. I don't think they never thought happened. of. They, they were just all then? ghost stories. They were never like possession. You yeah. Know? Like, I mean, I'm trying to. You'd have to be thinking of like an exploitation movie or something. Right. It wouldn't have been a studio film. I mean, yeah. I mean, because it it seemed like it was The Exorcist suddenly gave Hollywood the whole idea, of like demon possession mm-hmm. and witchcraft. You know, mm-hmm. it came out of the 70s, and uh, Evil Dead was the one that said, you know, I mean, 
that's the one that says we're going to put everybody in a cabin and, you know, possess each right. one of them. They're going to kill each other before. And this is, I mean, it's going right after that template. There's yeah. another movie that we watched on the podcast. I'm not sure how many of you were here for that called Spookies. Spookies. Which was also kids going to party uh, in a, uh, that was a, was that a, a funeral home? No. no, that was just like just a, a house. house. That was just a house. There was something about a funeral home, right? Because there, there was, was like a dude a, in the basement. Like a, that, well, no, there was like an addition to it or onto the house, or parts where they couldn't access, where like the fucking old guy was, yeah, was doing things and had his like w- where the two movies combined, yeah. as as we know, uh, two movies combined into one is Spookies. It's uh, so we're saying that Night yeah. of the Demons is a total ripoff of Evil Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of. In a way, it kind of is. Like, okay, but I'm also willing to go that, that Demons, uh, you know, another one, Demons, Demons 2, is kind of the same thing, except we're going to put them in a movie theater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's right? got to be that location. It's got to be locked in somewhere. Yeah. And magically, you can't get out. That right. also happens in Demons. There's a fucking brick wall. They can't, And that was 86. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they all just is like, all right, we started with locked in a cabin or stuck in a cabin in the woods and possession. He's like, we got to find just, you think locations was the other thing? That's like, we're going to take the basic elements of people getting possessed by demons and getting killed, but we just got to find a different location for our movie. We can keep basically all the same stuff, just a different location. That's what's going to make our movie different and interesting. But it's also got to be like the makeup effects and the yes. kills, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Those are yeah. The- yeah. Because that's the big things you go for. It's just like, what are you going to have him look like and how are you going to kill him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like the setting of Halloween gives you a lot more leeway and where you can set it to. Like, on a normal, like, Friday, teenagers are probably not going to go to an abandoned funeral home to party. But on Halloween, they're definitely going to, right. you know? Very true. Mm-hmm. This is a Halloween, yeah. quote unquote, movie. It mm-hmm. gives you, a, you know, the production designer room to, you know... Orange lights and you know yeah. pumpkins mm-hmm. and candles and you thought they the don't go too spooky. far with that in this movie. They no, start no, really enough. strong. They with start it. with it. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. don't carry it. Through. Yeah, no, not at all. Because everyone's in kind of like a costume, or at least uh, Judy is as barely. Alice. I mean, it is kind of like, like three people the, are in the, the bare minimum of a quote unquote Halloween movie. Yes. Yeah. Because there's not much. Because you're in a what the house, fuck is Stooges' costume? He's a, He's pig, a pig. He has a pig nose. He, but he wears for like the first ten minutes and then takes he off. And he wears He's an anarchy anarchist. Yeah, yeah. And there's and a pirate. Sweater. Sweater. Roger is a pirate. Yeah, He's the one of the movie. only ones wearing Other a costume. Other dudes, yeah. a doctor. Uh, a doctor. P- uh, Tinkerbell. Is that what she was? That, I was wondering. I'm like, she yeah. Peter Pan. I, I, I think it was like Peter Pan. Or Peter okay. Pan. Yeah. Tinkerbell or Peter Pan. Yeah. Could, I think it was Tinkerbell. Uh, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Mm-hmm. And I was going to say, is there a theme a going on here? But He's no. a Canadian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a Canadian. Yeah. A fancy Canadian. Hey, fancy. he's wearing a tuxi- tuxedo. I think, I think Linnea Quigley was just supposed to be a little girl. She's a yeah. princess. Just supposed yeah. to be infantilized in a gross way. Yeah. Yeah. It was just. Gross. Yeah. She has a remarkable talent for ripping off convenience stores. Oh, God. oh yeah, that was a that's, fun that's, scene, that's, though. That's a good I scam. enjoyed that. Yeah. That's a good scam. I yeah. enjoyed Two it guys who were idiots enough to just stare at a woman's ass while yeah. you steal things. Well, it's just there were so many people in that store too. Yeah. There was yeah. like a good a thirty people, people in there. that store just watching her grab shit. Yeah. Barbara Crampton was just walking through that store at one point. <laughs> That's what it looked like. I'm like, she's just going through. Don't care. Yeah. It's amazing, like, how much, I mean, it's an exploitation movie, but, you know, I mean, mm. now, you know, you see movies, but the amount of nudity that they work into this thing, it's efficient. Within, like, the first five minutes, there's exposition being given while uh, the Alice, I don't know, Judy, Judy character is on the phone, and she's taking her clothes off in front of the mirror, like, right out of the pretty much like yeah. second scene in the movie. Efficiency. You know why your audience is here. They're here for the boobs, the blood, and uh, the guts and gore. Right. It's odd that we get bottom nudity and not top nudity. That they go with that first. In those that is scenes. weird. That's not mm-hmm. uh, something that usually happens. Mm-hmm. Usually they yeah. just go for the boobs, because it's an yeah. easy thing at that point. Yeah. yeah. I'd say, I, and I'm, this is coming from a man, and I don't know how women feel about this, mm-hmm. I feel like women are just more apt to, if in a movie like this, expose the breasts, rather than anything else well, it's weird like that's too. easier it's weird because her little brother comments on her boobs like three times yeah. and yet oh she's got bodacious yeah boobs. Bodacious. like, really, like bodacious. her little brother really like, makes comments a bunch and then like so you feel like that's a setup for you to see something and then no yeah and then we don't know that. that's weird that, that was odd mm. especially because she's Another wearing that bra that's like basically yeah. see-through yeah. anyways she yeah. might as yeah. well have not oh do you little think it was an creepy. actress choice do you think the actress was like Bottom nudity only. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 like, I'm like, why is that better than the top? 
because it was just her butt. It I was guess like so. just yeah. butt nudity. Well, maybe they're, maybe they're breaking into it. It's butt nudity first, first then yeah. boob nudity, then, and, then, uh, yeah. then nipple frontal, uh, frontal nudity, nudity yeah. later. Oh, there's mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah. Right. Right. It covers the whole game. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's right. like stands out in some ways. Yeah. That, like I mm-hmm. almost is it all the female up characters? Up and down, up and down. Not the girl no, no, outside. Not, not, and not what is her name? Which one? Bitch. The one who. The one, yeah. <laughs> the one outside. Basically, the one who ends up on the windshield. Helen. Oh yeah. Okay. And, that could uh, be untrue. I don't know. It's you're, Helen. You're apt to. It's make Helen. It oh, you're apt to make names. Helen. It's yeah. Helen. Don't you remember Roger yelling for her name? It's Helen. Oh. Kevin, alcohol, please. Alcohol, I want an alcohol, please. <laughs> yeah, Helen and uh, no, because Helen doesn't get naked, and uh, and Angela, okay, Angela, and there's a thong, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. Angela's what? not naked. We're cataloging the well, I mean, if you're gonna catalog the deaths, you gotta catalog. The mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of you know, mm-hmm. par for the course. Yeah. For this is movies. the Joe Bob Briggs, this is how he got right, his yeah. mm-hmm. This is you know, maybe we can develop breasts. this into a we're yeah. regular Mr. Skin <laughs> here, you know, like <laughs> Joe Bob's a better place. To I mean, we don't have a time stamp for any of this, but you know, we'll get there, we'll get there, yeah. Yeah, we'll on our it. Facebook page, at <laughs> facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, at some point, the guy who, uh, well, actually, no, I was going to say the guy who um, is Mr. Exposition has figured out that, you know, how that you beat the demon, but it's not him. It's Roger, the pirate. No, it's Judy. Judy somehow comes up with the idea that the demons it's can, Halloween. are only right. out because yeah. it's Halloween. And when the sun comes up, they're all going to die. Go back She's to hell. guessing. Yeah, yeah. they'll mm-hmm. go back. Yeah, go back yeah. They don't have to go back to hell tonight. I like the way they just like come up with this stuff like out of thin fucking air. You gotta when you're that desperate and you gotta find something to cling to at this point when demons are chasing you through a haunted. Well, house. she's going off of um, one of the girls said earlier that it that was Halloween's the night that yeah. they can roam freely. It makes sense. Yeah. Whether it's going to come, they true were or not. they were talking about it when they were about to do like the seance thing. Yeah. Roger subscribes to this theory immediately. Yeah. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. I don't know if that was a good impression. Roger voice. Well, Roger was very, uh, you know, like uh, uh, catatonic. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sean! Uh, Sean's got like a... Hmm. I, 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 it's a joke. It's a I, joke. I would say he, <laughs> for he levity. reacts off the people around him. <sighs> so I would say... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, so they figure out that this is how you do it, right? Like the sun comes up and then, uh, and you're gonna kill the demons. And lo and behold, that happens. I, I mean, it really does. They just fall into a pit. And just go, yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And they dematerialize. Demon like, smoke. Only two people make it out of their life. I kind of like that, where it's just a one night thing, where you just like, we don't really get, uh, like anything that shows that they're still existing, that the evil is still there. It's just like, hey, it's this night, this happens, they got away, that's it. They'll never have to deal with it again. I like it. Well, there's the nice little wraparound story. Is it a wraparound story? Well, we didn't talk about the credits this time either, but the nice, uh, like, animated, um, like, Halloween postcard kind of opening credit sequence. Yeah. 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 Which was done by. Oh, that was, um, yeah, yeah, um, Kathy Zielinski. Yeah. Who went on to animate for Disney and has done all the recent Pixar movies like Frozen and Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Start she's your, making bank. Start yeah, your career yeah. In she's, horror, folks, she's really big places. in animation right now. Mm-hmm. But the wraparound, I guess, if I can call, you call it, is the old man, right? Mm-hmm. So there's this has nothing to do with the rest Unexpected of the movie. Unexpected ending. Yeah, no kidding. But the you know the teenagers driving to the uh, mortuary torment this old man. Hey, old man! Blah 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 blah. Right, and he's like. Doesn't endear himself to anybody because no. he's calling Judy a whore, whore, you know, because that's what all men do. And uh, then he's like got razor blades and apples that he plans to give out to kids on Halloween night. What a mm-hmm. dick. So the end of the movie. You could kill a kid. This is, it should have been a wraparound to Halloween uh, 2. Is what yeah. It yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where it should have been. The other movie where somebody actually has, the, maybe yeah. it was he yeah. put the razor blades that's, that's in what I'm the saying. apple. Oh, that's how the movie should have ended with some kid biting into that apple. Just, right. It just, and then cut to black. It really, it should have been. Uh, and yeah. then wide eyes and yeah. then cut to black. Yeah. Well, what about this Genius. ending, though? We're kind of getting that, but except it's just right. desserts and the whole tale's yeah. in the crib. Yeah, kind of I kind of loved this ending. I, I do. It doesn't feel a part of the movie, but well, I do. No, but I like it's, the ending. Like I like. It's out of nowhere, but it's fun. It is. It is. It doesn't. Why they? It's weird. It's very weird. Yeah, because it's the make, old so. man and his wife. Yeah, yeah. She's making. And he's she, a, made he's a, a, she made a homemade apple pie. Fucking. 
curmudgeon. <laughs> but she made an apple pie out of the apples that he put the razor blades into the night before. Used to love my homemade pie. What? Homemade? What? You, you had so many the, leftover apples. The blue veins. I did. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, that like was I was cool. like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. They're yeah. just the, the start. Everything starts popping up and everything. It's just like wow. It's because of Steve Johnson. He did He's good. Steve it was Johnson. Awesome. He did good. We've talked about him on other episodes. Oh, we too, have. But I know I don't even remember what they were. But every once in a while, oh, it's like yeah. Steve Johnson did the yeah. And I know it wasn't Guyver. That was Steve Screaming Mad George. Screaming Mad George, yeah. Right. All these guys. Who, yeah. 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 But we mentioned them, and that's the important thing, because many other people wouldn't. It's kind of upsetting, considering we ate apple pie before we recorded We this. did! And that was not planned. Did you do that? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> no, I had no idea. I had never seen this movie I, before, so I did not know that. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah my first time I'm feeling choked movie. up right now. Yeah, so I'm just like, like, oh, God, we ate apple pie. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, do we have any other We straight... didn't even describe what happened to this man. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Well, I mean, he's the like, blue he's veins the, and then... the blue veins and then, like, the razor blades start making their way through his neck. And she, his wife fed him the razor bladed apples in the apple pie. On purpose. On yeah. purpose. Yeah, because yeah. then he, you know, keels over, bleeding out. And she just kind of kisses him. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> That's a good ending to a different movie. Yeah, yeah. That belongs That belongs in a completely different movie. Yeah. yeah. It's but a great ending to I a different movie. I would say that would it's, fit, it's, like, yeah. like you were saying, Sean, that would fit into Trick or Treat perfectly. It does. It feels you know? like, yeah, Trick or Treat yeah. is where this belongs. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. It's funny. Well, the whole story, I guess, could be condensed, you know, right? right? Condensed into yeah. one part of an anthology. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It kind of feels like Trick or Treat in that way that you have a couple different groups of kids yeah. at the beginning, and you're like, how the fuck do these people all even know each other or want to socialize because the, the clicks like don't match right yeah. but mm-hmm. um we'd also be remiss if we didn't talk about the musical contributions oh, aside from God. the awesome yes. Bauhaus song uh mm. all the other tunes in the movie were composed and performed <laughs> by the director's brother Bravo. yeah what was his name like something Ed's Michael David, Tenney David Tenney David Michael Tenney David Michael not Michael David Tenney. Tennant yeah Tenney. <laughs> not David Tennant David, David Tenney Tenney, no. <laughs> yeah Including the awesome end credit song, of course. The uh, the, the, the beast guy? within. The I beast see, inside. Yeah. I had said this at the beginning of the podcast. I could have sang it for you, but I don't remember it. Yeah. Oh, it I think it was. Guitar I think it was the beast within. It's like it's like the last man standing, and we're fighting the beast within. Fighting the beast within. <laughs> Yeah. That's, I, think, uh, I think that's how it went. With the, and with a yell at the end, like, yeah, Yeah, one of those. More of a rock Yeah, like yell, a white snake type yeah, yell. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Tying it a back white snake ish, yes. Yeah, like and we've snake. come full circle. Yep. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> All right. Well, friends, uh, we're going to read some mail. Uh, so I suppose we should summon the bar back. That was it, right? <laughs> Igor. <laughs> <heard> some mail. <laughs> Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Thanks. He's a good bar back, you know? Keeps uh, the table nice he and clean. He spilled the ice, though. I'm not, like, it's... Thanks, Igor. I appreciate the effort. I know. I appreciate the effort. You did a good job. He does the best he can, okay? I that ice in the glass for him. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, by the way, after this, we're going to come back with our final wrap-ups. You're going to find what each one of us thought of uh, Night of the Demons. How did Holly react to it this time around, seeing it for the first time since she was 10? How did Michaela react to it, seeing it for the first time? How did Sean react for seeing it for the first? For, it's what? Serious? We're a bunch of first timers. First timers club. We're going to find out uh, (laughs) after we read the mail. If you want to get a hold of us, and we hope that you do, I know we already told you this, but just to reiterate, (laughs) you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. And by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. B Pay nineteen fifty nine writes to us on iTunes. He gave us a review on iTunes. Thank thank you you very much, B Pay. Thank you so much. Or he or she says, fun podcast to listen to. I love watching the movies and hearing them discuss and give history of the films and the creators. Oh, thanks. Uh, Drew Scott it's, writes in. It's really that. nice. It's yeah. really nice. I was, I was prepared for the worst. Yeah, knowing I sir. turned to views, I was like, oh, God, here we I go. <laughs> We're not encouraging you to give us bad reviews. 
Give us just a good reason. Sometimes they're backhanded, though. Yeah, that's fine. Sometimes they start off nice and then hit you in the back with, you know, nice or nice. (laughs) Drew Scott writes in through Facebook, and he says, I found out about your show through iTunes when I was searching for Tremors. Ah, you're welcome. And tuning in is one of the best decisions I have made. You all, It really is. (laughs) You you all have or had great chemistry, referring to the departure of members, uh, which Uh, is hard to find with a lot of podcast shows. Keep cranking out those shows every Saturday and know I'll be listening right away. But I have to mention, Bert Gummer lives in the desert and has a damn elephant gun, a freaking elephant gun. What game is this man trying to kill? Very, Melvin? Very good point. And yeah, maybe he's great to kill point. Melvin. Great point. Yeah. Just to shoot like around Melvin's feet. Yeah. That's a good point, sir. Why? But Continuity he's a gun error. nut. But he's just a gun nut. Like yeah. he has guns that he doesn't need. It's a, it's a fetish at this point. When you right? want it you know? and don't have it, <laughs> yeah. you sing a whole nother tune. Yep. <laughs> and that's a quote from Tremors too. There you go. There you just go. so you know. Wow. <laughs> there it is. I am completely well out of ammo. Well done. <laughs> That's never happened to me before. Sean really likes Tremors. I yeah. love Tremors. Thank you, sir. I appreciate yes. you writing in. You are my new favorite fan. Uh, for our sure, show man. about, uh, what should we do first? Ghost in the Shell or Night of the Demons? Ghost in the Shell. Ghost, Ghost in, in the Shell. Oh, no. Chris Huddleston writes Chris in. And says, oh, no, I'm sorry. C-Huds. I almost call him K-Huds for some reason. But I'm sorry, work. man. I'm sorry you listened to that. Yeah. Oh. He, well, he says, like you, I've never been much of, of an anime fan. Yeah. I watched Ghost in the Shell a couple times, but couldn't get into it. However, I'd recommend checking out Perfect Blue. If you haven't seen it, it's a yeah. horror thriller and very giallo-like. A great movie, in my opinion. And also, he says, regarding fedora-wearing folks, Maybe just summer huge Corey Feldman fan. Oh. You know what? He might be right about that. I, yeah. You know what? I'm going right. to choose to believe that. You know, I'm going to choose to believe that they are. I would prefer that. We you just know? can't explain I would, the very yeah. tales. So, a buddy of mine just went and saw Corey Feldman in concert. Get the and fuck he out was of fucking I would riding, like to go to that. He was riding around on a fucking uh, hoverboard. Uh, uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah, A hoverboard wearing his fedora, just you know, going nuts. Yeah. So maybe. <laughs> it's yeah, a possibility. He's got a point. And Perfect Blue, I, I can't believe this totally exited my mind in this conversation. But like, Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan, he purchased the rights to Perfect Blue to take scenes from it to make into Black Swan. Oh. So even if you haven't seen it, you've kind of sort of seen it if you've seen Black Swan. So yeah. I read some of the synopsis. It did mm-hmm. sound very interesting. So mm-hmm. I have to check yeah. that out. Chris. Thank that is you a good recommendation. for the recommendation. He knows yeah. what he's talking about. Steve Hyden writes in and says, Ghost hey, in the Shell is such a good film. It was how I was introduced to anime. I think that's oh. for a lot of people that's the case. I think for so. Sure. I keep seeing Akira show up in Walmart now. Like and Ghost, in the Shell, Ghost in the Shell Innocence is sitting in there and everything. Mm-hmm. Like They're bringing all the animes and putting them back on the shelf. And today there was a rumor that they want Jordan Peele to do Don't it. do it. No, yeah. I'm on board. Go for it. Jordan uh, Peele's a great director. If anyone's going mean, yeah, sure to direct a reboot, I want him to do if it. He, hey, if he wants to it's do gonna it, happen. go for it's it. It's been in production hell for like 10 years now. Yeah, yeah. It's going to happen. Somebody somewhere has to have an idea. Yeah. So if it's going to happen, care. Jordan Peele might as well do it. If he wants to do it. I have, no, I have no opinions on that. They, I don't think they should do it. it like it, the movie exists as a cartoon. You can't do that. As a, a, we got Ghost in the Shell this weekend, and the reviews say that so we haven't seen it yet. But the reviews say basically that's the case. It's not the same thing. It's all beauty mm-hmm. and no brain, is right yeah, here. Which yeah. is what Akira mm-hmm. unfortunately will end up as. Okay, so about uh, Night of the Demons, Dom Cree writes Dom. in. Hi, Dom. And says, I have to check, but I may just have a VHS copy of this movie. Oh, shit. Whoa. I don't need to fire up the VCR. Oh, shit. oh gee. Do it. Is it tinted? I want to know if it's tinted yeah. orange or red like we thought it was. For the Please write shit. in and tell us what the colors are. Yeah, let us are. know if it's tinted for you because it was very clear on our copy, mm-hmm. but... Uh, yeah, the light outside the windows is white. How much yeah. screen? Yeah. It's mo- we're Harsh silver white. Moon yeah. How many yeah. times did you have to hit the tracking button to watch this movie? Let me know, Dom. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, Ryan Burrett writes in and says, This movie Ryan. is great. Probably in my top five favorite movies of all time. Oh, damn. Yeah. Wow. Five. I believe that. He's a big Linnea Quigley fan. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but is that the only reason this is in the top five? No, I no, I, I, it, it can't doesn't be. surprise me knowing this is in his top five at all. So Top five. Wow. So I'm gonna I'm gonna guess the rest of his top five are Demons. Hellraiser, Ghostbusters, <laughs> Ghostbusters Two, Hellraiser Two, Hellbound, and then this movie. Wow, he's uh, uh, Ryan. Oh. Tell me if I'm wrong. Ryan, you are in a very specific <laughs> yeah. ballpark. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, his ruin writes in and says this is one of my all time favorites. The first is definitely the best. Oh, yeah, did we say? There's a Night of the Demons 2 and 3 and a remake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first is definitely the best, but I think the ninja nun in the second one and the priest from Dead Alive should have had a movie together. I... 
I haven't seen the second, but that's yeah, I agree because that sounds awesome. Why not? <laughs> right? You know, a ninja nun yeah. and a pre nun. Sounds yeah. great. Dead yeah. alive. I love dead alive. So yeah, why not? If you're outside of the U.S., it's brain dead to you, but <laughs> yeah. uh, dead alive to us. The priest Peter Jackson who kicks ass for the Lord. Yeah, Is it the um, lawnmower one. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. I've and seen, I've seen that scene, and I was yeah. like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, I was exhausted by that scene. Yeah, yeah it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that and was, uh, when oh, sorry, Peter yeah. Jackson has Actually, had a history shit. of showing no restraint. Yeah. And that is the best example of no restraint is that go. movie, I think. I would say so. <laughs> yeah. um, and Drew Scott writes in again and says, oh, My Drew. cousin introduced me into horror films when I was a child, and this was one of the films I loathed to the max. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Woof. Loathed but he it. says, It's a pleasure listening to your show, and as always, I'll crack open a beer and enjoy. Oh, thank Aww. you, Drew. Cheers. <laughs> Drinking with us. Yes. That's right. We'll yeah. have one. We're all going to cheers to you right Clink. now, man. Clink. Hey. Clink. Oh, we like new go. listeners. Hey. Hey. Yeah, you like us. So now we're going to have a wrap up. Uh, final thoughts on Night of the Demons. We're going to go around the table. We're going to start with Sean. Oh, um, uh, Colin. <laughs> Colin, what did you yeah, think? You God week. damn it. Yeah. Uh, Colin, <laughs> what um, did you think about Night of the Demons? <laughs> All right. Uh, Night of the Demons, I have seen this several times before. Several? Uh, okay. Yeah, I saw it back in the VHS days and uh, Why do you once keep or twice. Back to it? I don't, actually. It oh. keeps coming back. It keeps back I to mean, you? it's one of those, right? It's a boomerang. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you throw it away and it comes right back. Yes. Um, it's not that I hate it. I don't entirely dislike this movie. It's just kind of... Um, you know, over time, I think, you know, as we were mentioning earlier, you know, you've seen Evil Dead, you've seen uh, Demons, you've seen, you know, other movies like this. And of that set, I think I regard this as, um, you know, probably the least of the the, the set of Demon Possession movies. Um, and why that is, I think it's like, OK, well, you got pros and cons, right? The pros are. The makeup effects are very good. The makeup designs are kind of creepy. Angela's stalking around the house. Angela's dance, you remember the, uh, you know, uh, lipstick in the nipple thing, you remember. Yeah. Linnea Quigley, you remember. The <laughs> setting, you remember. The opening titles are really cool. I think I pegged it down this time what the problem is with this movie. I mean, you know, the acting is very, you know, amateur hour, but and the writing's like perfunctory. The characters we don't actually can't really re- remember distinguish them aside from how they looked, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, um, but I think I pegged down what the problem is with this movie. And I've had this, you know, like every time I watch, I'm like, I'm just not digging this. Why am I not digging this? I think I got it. It's the fucking score. Now, I'm not saying ah. that the, I'm not saying that the, uh, the style or the instrumental in- instrumentation is bad. Mm-hmm. It's the score doesn't accentuate the right points in the movie at the right time. Mm-hmm. There's constantly like, you know, the director will do the point. the camera pushing in on somebody where there's supposed to be like music happening and Something, there's nothing yeah. or it, yeah. it hits on the wrong point. Uh, somebody jumps out of a room and there's like a stinger. But that moment where uh, um, one character rescues another from the top of the wall and it's a big heroic thing because, like, she's going to fall. And then all of a sudden the hand comes down. Like, the music that kicked in a couple seconds too late was yeah. like, what the fuck are you doing? And <laughs> it was like, this is, I think if you rescored this movie, it would play better, mm-hmm. at least to me. And, you know, it would probably go up in my estimation. But I think that that's the problem. And it's nepotism. You know, the guy's giving his brother a sure. job. And it's like, yeah, I can, you know, compose music, but he doesn't understand film music, why it works or where it's supposed to be. And I think that's the biggest problem. Um, why is that not a thing? With this why movie? Do people go back and like, because the, the obvious problem you have with this movie, like composers go back and re- don't do anything to the movie, but just rescore yeah. them. Yeah. To do that. Because I don't think there's an editing or rhythm issue to right. I mean, I some stuff yeah. goes on long, but it's just the pacing of the time, yeah. you know? But I think, yeah, it's the, the music really covers over, makes your edits flow, you know? But it's like the, t- the rhythm of the editing and the rhythm of the music are not, you know, they're not playing together. They're not keeping time at the same pace. So, um, but beyond that, I mean, like, you know, there are the moments that you remember. I don't know. It's really hard to recommend it because, like I said, there's other movies that I think you should go see. Like, you know, we were saying tonight, it's like, we should watch Demons, like, right now for, like, uh, uh, an injection of energy into this type of um, concept. So, eh, I don't know. 
I mean, again, when I saw it, I was old enough that it didn't, you know, uh, bother me because I think I was, I saw, I didn't see it in the 80s. I came to it like in the 90s or something. Mm. And so I missed it on its initial. I don't remember if it actually played in theaters. I assume it was a theatrical feature, but I mean, I knew Night of the Demons from its video, you know, incarnations and the various sequels. I don't think any of the cast returns for the sequels. The writer might, I don't know. I wouldn't. (laughs) <laughs> but it's Angela every time. It's Angela's, you know, having another party and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. And uh, the remake um, was okay. But, you know, it's got Edward Furlong. He's mopey. It's got him and Monica Kina. And oh, they go. You're saying no. all the right oh, words. No. Yeah. 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 Watch this movie. No. And, Monica uh, Kina. He's like a drug Channel dealer. Elizabeth. Yeah, Edward Furlong. Shannon yeah. Elizabeth is Angela. She's throwing a party in a house that's You like, all aren't doing anything to uh, no. be in this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I remember there is a scene that takes place in the basement. They have to get down there, and that's where the remains are, whatever, after everybody turns into demons. So um, it's better produced, but it's also less memorable. Mm. Uh, somehow it's like this one has the images that you remember from. It's like yeah. from a simpler time, right, where... Mm. I mean, I appreciate it's kind of its naivete. Um, like, we got to go through this door. Like, everybody's sitting, like, that's a crematorium. But she doesn't know it because she's an <laughs> 80s teenager. So it all has to be explained to the 80s audience. So this door is a crematorium. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'm going to say you can pass on Night of the Demons. Sean. I agree. That's it. It's no, but it's 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 hard following Colin when he come when he does reviews where it pretty much encapsulates encapsulates. I'll move to a different chair. I mean, maybe next time. Where it pretty much encapsulates everything you think about the movie. Um, there's definitely like benefits to this movie. I really enjoyed like the makeup effects because it's the kind where it's not like it's it seems scary to me. Like if a demon was to possess a person, I think this is what they would look like. The yellow eyes and those teeth and everything. Ugh, it bothers me. Um, there's uh, that's one of the pros to this movie it's got Linnea Quigley um it is there's a few memorable scenes um but I mean looking at it and like uh the time that this came out there are I think other better options if you want to see this type of movie um because you know I see stuff like this people stuck in a house and getting possessed and picked up one by one I do just right go right back to spookies and I think there are better versions of this movie like we I mean we keep mentioning demons like I want to watch demons right now because that's it's a v- extremely well done um movie um this one's pretty good I didn't uh have many problems with it but I think you can get what you get out of this movie from other movies. So I think I'd recommend one of those other movies over this one. It's not, uh, it's, it didn't, uh, it's not a terribly bad movie. It didn't anger me in any way. Um, it was enjoyable, but I think you can get stuff out of the other movies. So I would, uh, not recommend this one. Other demons movies. All right. I'm going to preface this with um, some Kevin Smith like story time here. Uh-oh. So uh, I, I promise it will keep it brief. But I, I actually uh, met. Very much unlike Kevin Smith. Yeah. Unlike Kevin Smith, I will keep it brief, but it will be a personal story from my life that Alrighty. may or may not bear any relevance <laughs> to this. This but, one um, time I was at a mortuary. For <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I actually met Linnea quickly before I saw her in any movies ever. Uh, I went to like an all night drive in horror movie marathon where they were showing. The 4K remaster of Texas Chainsaw, which is why I was there. Nice. Um, a creep show, which, holy shit, way too long for a drive in movie. Um, Return of the Living Dead, mm-hmm. and one other movie I can't remember. Um, and she was there because of Return of the Living Dead. She was signing autographs, and it was free, but you could make a donation. And she was super kind, really nice. I met her just because, hey, there's a bunch of people in line. Let's get in line. I'll find out who this is later. And, Are you famous? Yeah, exactly. And, and because we're in a drive-in in the middle of fucking mid- middle of bumfuck nowhere, Illinois. You know, I might as well hang out with the person who's here. And she was great. She was super nice. And she seemed genuinely happy to be known for these movies. Like, they were showing Return of the Living Dead where she's naked for most of the movie. And she she seemed genuinely excited that people still appreciate, you know, these movies she was in. So, even if you don't like them, she likes that you like her in them, you know? So, this movie, like, I know she's kind of like B-movie royalty. But, like, to me, I came to her really late in life. And she has never been really formative for me. This movie, I think, it, I think it's fun and it's got great moments, but at the same time, there's nothing you can't 
get out of this movie from other movies. Like, Evil Dead 2 is very near and dear to my heart. Like, I have a tattoo of the, like, mounted deer head on the on the wall from that movie. Like, I love that movie, and I feel like there's nothing from this movie that you can't get from Evil Dead 2. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, Linnea Quigley's performance is so great, and the makeup on her is great, the makeup on Angela is great, and... You know, there are moments of this movie that are really great, but at the same time, like, I don't know if it's worth... For 90 minutes, it moves really slow. You know, it's yeah. it's a 90-minute movie, but its pace is not handled very well. Mm-hmm. You think this movie's gonna... Like, it has a weird turn, you have the nipple and the lipstick, but... And you think it's gonna make a full turn into that weirdness, but it... The nipple and the lipstick, lipstick is really as weird as it gets. It doesn't really move past that. Right, nothing equals that. Uh, exactly. Whereas, you know, Evil Dead kind of keeps topping itself with mm-hmm. each movie and with with each weird scene in the movie. This movie, like, it ups it once and then never kind of returns to that. Mm. Um, it's a good movie, but at the same time, there are things you see in this movie that you can get from other movies. So... I guess, like, if you're a Linnea Quigley purist or, uh-huh. you know, like, you really love... If you feel like... Are there you, a Linnea Quigley purist out there? Colin, oh, I'm sure there is. Have you seen them all? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Sounds I'm, like Ryan Burt might oh, be one I'm of them. Ryan Burt is probably <laughs> one. Let us know, Ryan. Yeah. Um, I would say watch it. I If you've seen the nipple and the lipstick scene, you've probably seen everything, so don't bother watching the rest of the movie. It's not terrible. It's just not a must-watch. That's what I would say about it. Yeah, I um. How you I, doing, Holly? You good? You I'm feel like holding uh, up over there? Yeah. Did you work through you know, it. No, I really you put some issues to rest. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys. Was this a therapy session? This fear with me. Yes, this was a safe space. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> you facing my fear with me, and I think I got through it. Okay. I think I did. Um, I can see why it scared me as a ten. This year is old. when we all turn into demons and have the, our faces just. One of us. One of us. I would legit chew my wrists open right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a knife in the bar down there yeah, somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Just Some, a bottle something, cap. <laughs> yeah. something would be broken. Shards would be shoved into my wrist. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think I can definitely see why this scared me as a ten year old for sure. The, the makeup is really fantastic. Um, it's very good. It is. I, I I still think it's creepy. I I, I think that Angela and um, Susan Susan yes, thank you, Linnea. I think they're the scariest of the, of the makeup jobs. Um, but I, I do think that it's it still holds up. I I, I agree with Sean that. I imagine if a demon was in front of me, that's probably what they would look like. That's really, it's it's spot on in that aspect. Um, I definitely agree with Michaela that it feels long. It takes way too long to get into the meat of this movie. Um, there's just so many cheesy, there's so much cheesy dialogue to get through. And it just, really is. Yeah, it's, it's so very, much... Ugh. It's so much like high school 80s dialogue. Yeah. It's like, shut up. Oh, my God. Go with your sister. All right? Don't yeah. worry about it. It's, it's just... way too much. It's Rocky like just... Balboa side mouth talking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Hey. It, I don't know. It takes your sister, forever. Man. Get your sister, man. <laughs> Maybe we we'll go and get a tiny dinner. <laughs> Don't no, keep going. Mom. Keep going. Don't call your mom. Going. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. I love it. Um, yeah, it's way too long. It, because for me, this movie started at the party. Probably, I guess it was during the dances when everything started going down. Right, that's when shit started hitting when the she, fan. When Angela starts dancing, mm-hmm. she's Her, dancing, and then the, dance. the stuff's going on and upstairs with the other chicks. So that's when it starts. I right? think so because she leads uh, Linnea really leads him away, and that's when yeah shit goes, yeah. starts going down throughout so, the house. For me, that's really when the movie started. That's when I actually cared about yeah. watching this movie. I was bored yeah. for the first half. Because it is kind of stereotypical, like stupid dialogue. Shit yeah, it we get really to that is. Mm-hmm. It really is, and it was just kind of. T- like, you guys, uh, yeah. you guys need a hand. And dancing to kick off. <laughs> <laughs> and dancing to kick off the action is very Evil Dead as well. Like, it really, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Is. So yeah, the the first half of this movie was it was hard to chew. It was it was a lot. But at the party when it picks up, it was fun to watch. Um, I don't know that that necessarily makes it recommendable because. I mean, t- an entire half of the movie, you're bored. That's not really a good sign. That's, but I did enjoy the second half. The there's not much dialogue, so maybe that was part of it. <laughs> Probably more just being chased around the house. Um, I thought the 
I thought the gory parts were 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 fun. They like the the thumbs and the eyes. Oh, yeah, I, I like I that liked that part. part. Yeah, there's some eyeballs going. I liked that. Game of Thrones cool. relevance to what to the beer we're drinking and what <laughs> right. we're talking about. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> it full circle. I don't know. What she's full circle about. right here. Full circle. You'll find out someday okay. when you're older. We'll tell you. Oh. We'll tell you when you're older. When, when you go, so when you're older, no, no. we'll tell One you. Day yeah. older. And then Sean says, "I'm older now." I no, feel okay. like I'm older. I know. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I, I thought the second half of this was a lot of fun. Uh, I was not as scared this time. I'm happy Good. to say. Good. Good. Scared, but not as. That means Sca- it's not yeah. working. Scared, just not as scared. Um. I think that if you are a demon movie enthusiast, and there are you sh- you'd probably you've probably already seen it, but you should probably check it out. It's worth a watch. Um, it was a little, it was a little too. I want to make my own demon zombie movie. Like there was way too many parts that were pretty much picked right from other movies. I mean, there was even the obvious reference at the end that the, the dude's gravestone said Romero. Like, it was just I very... <laughs> died tonight. Like, died tonight. We got that was it. my favorite part. That was pretty good. Yeah. There needed to be more tonight. shit like that. That yeah. was funny, yeah. yeah. Like, died tonight. Like, died the tonight. end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah, more shit like that would have been, like, a little more wicked humor. Yeah, as more... yeah make it more lighthearted. Because yeah. it, it was lighthearted. Mm-hmm. Just not necessarily in the right parts. Right. No edge to it. It's just yeah. Like, mm. So it had its memorable moments, but as a movie, like as a whole, I don't think it's that memorable. Um, I would say you could probably pass it and you're not going to miss anything. You might want to check out the makeup just to see what, what it looks like. It's pretty cool. What it's all about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, the song at the end, though, was pretty great. That's very mm-hmm. true. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I think I sang it once. I don't need to sing yeah. again, right? We're yeah. all good. Did we find out? Is the, the soundtrack available from Wax Oh, we didn't look it up. Uh, are, are, are we sure White Snake didn't write the soundtrack for this movie? Yeah, no, it was, it was the brother. David Tenney. <laughs> David, <laughs> Michael Tenney. David oh, Michael that? Tenney. David Michael Tenney. Oh, yeah. Michael Tenney. Michael Tenney. Michael Tenney. But it just sounds good. David Michael Tenney. I'm pretty oh, sure that, it's on that Amazon. Guy. Yes, yeah. that guy. We all know. It probably means that Kevin Tenney was doing backup vocals on the Awesome. Probably yeah. the yeah, beast definitely brothers yeah. Band. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can you can buy it on Amazon. Woohoo! Oh, awesome. You can buy anything on Amazon. Yeah. So yeah, I, I got it. Buy Colin on Amazon at this point. <laughs> How much do you cost? Uh, <laughs> one e yeah, or two. Depends yeah, on the yeah, accessories. Yeah. <laughs> With podcast and, uh, and yeah. fellow freak show guys. And working audio set. equipment. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, that must cost a lot. So, yeah. so that brings us to the end of Night of the Demons, but you got to tune in next week when we're going to watch a movie chosen by... Not me. Look at me. Well, you're supposed to shout the goddamn names. Whose name? Whose turn is it? Michaela. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So next you week know, I'm just gonna. Point it's okay, Sean. I see how it is. You have to point. I see I'm, how it is, Sean. I, never, I get it. I never remember the you know, order. It's fine. I yelled it's my fine. own name earlier. You know, today. I'm I'm the old man on the totem pole. I get it. I don't it, know, you know what's going on. Um, Michaela. We're we're gonna watch <laughs> Home Alone too. I'm just kidding. Oh! <laughs> You actually scared me. Uh, uh, actually, yes. yeah, I was like, I told you I was, was gonna like, do it. I told you oh, she did. Yes. She told me earlier she's gonna I go. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. hall pass. Yeah. If okay. that ever comes up, like, well, I'm gonna be sick that week. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Right? Colin, the first time in six years, Colin's been sick for his own podcast. <laughs> oh my god, you scared me. Okay, <laughs> just kidding. We're not watching Home Alone two as much as I would love to torture Colin with. It. We're gonna watch 2005 Wes Craven's Cursed. Oh, oh Wes Craven's oh. werewolf movie. His, his werewolf cursed werewolf. That was about ten years too cursed. late. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll have fun all with right. it. Um, you guys got to promise me though. I need you all to do me one favor for this movie. Howl of the Moon. Something. Don't like look at the cast list because there are amazing surprises that I would like to ex- like for you to experience in real time. So you guys haven't seen this? Don't watch the cast. Don't seen don't look at the cast list. Most of it. Okay, don't revisit but which, it. But which cast list? The original, the theatrical one. The okay. one that is yeah. in the movie. The one, the one that was available. Not yes. the first one. Not the okay. first one. <laughs> okay. The theatrical one. The one that was actually released later on. A movie that yes. has some history. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about with the history of this movie, so we'll get into it next week. But All of yeah. that will be explained on our Cursed podcast next week. So stay with us until then. The basement is going dark. <laughs>